myself, Dr. Smirki, Senior Resident, Department of Ophthalmology, Stems, Center Lecturer on Anatomy and Physiology and Pathology of Cancer. Conjunctiva was derived from the word conjoin, which means to join. So the name conjunctiva has been given to this mucous membrane due to the fact that it joins the eye wall to the eyelids. It is a translucent mucous membrane which lies the posterior surface of the eyelids and the anterior aspect of the eye wall. The novel conjunctiva looks pinkish in color, has a smooth surface, is shiny. Transparent structure. There are normally large to deep blood vessels which run vertically over the surface. These are blood vessels which can be seen going vertically over the surface. Now, the functions of conjunctiva. The primary functions of the conjunctiva are to keep the front surface of the eye moist and lubricated. And the inner surface of the eyelids moist, so they open and close easily without friction or causing any eye irritation. They protect the eye from the dust, debris, and infection causing organisms. Conjunctiva has many small, small blood vessels which provide nutrients to the eyelids. It also contains special cells which secrete a component of the tear film to help prevent a dry eye symptom. Now the parts of the conjunctiva, as you can see, the conjunctival lining starts from the margin of the eyelid, from here, covers the inner margin of the eyelids, goes up to the fornix and covers the eyelid. Now the part which covers the inside of the eyelids is called the palpebral conjunctiva. The parts which cover the eye wall lies over the sclera and limbus, it's called the pulpa conjunctiva. And the part which joins them, it, called the, it is called the phonation conjunctiva. The palpebral conjunctiva is divided into marginal, tarsal, and orbital. The marginal conjunctiva is present at the margin of the eyelid, starting from the margin. It is like a transition zone between the skin and the conjunctiva proper. And the conjunctiva lining, which is uh, present over the tarsal plate, it is called tarsal conjunctiva. And after that, there is orbital conjunctiva. Up to the fonts. Now, the bulbar conjunctiva, the part which lies over the sclera is called bulbar. It's called scleral, and the part at the limbus is called limbus. The furniture can be timer. They are of four, they are divided into four parts the superior, inferior phonics, and later the medial phonics. Now, the palpebral conjunctiva it is richly vascular and extremely thin and strongly bounded to the tarsal plate. This is the palpebral conjunctiva. This is the bulb. This is red, richly vascular, thin, and bounded to the tarsal plate, upper lid and the lower lid bones. It is subdivided into marginal, tarsal, and orbital. Now, the marginal it extends from the lid up, uh, from the lid margin up to the sulcus subtarsalis in two and two millimeter back of the lid. It is a transitional zone between the skin and the conjunctiva, and the clamor puncta open in the marginal zone. This is the marginal conjunctiva. Now, the tarsal conjunctiva, the part of conjunctiva which lies over the tarsal plate is called the tarsal conjunctiva. It is strongly adherent to the whole tarsal plate in the upper lid and half of the width of tarsus in the lower lid. The tarsal glands are seen through, it has yellow streaks. These are the tarsal glands which can be seen through the conjunctiva as yellow streaks. 
Now the orbital, it lies loose between the tarsal plate. This is the orbital part. Between the tarsal plate and the fornix, it is called the orbital conjunctiva. Orbital margin of the upper eyelid is loose and lies over the molar's muscle. Now the purple conjunctiva. It is transparent and lies loose over the underlying structures. Therefore, it can be moved easily and is separated from the anterior sclera by epistleral tissue and tenon scapula. The average thickness of vulvar conjunctiva is 33 microns and is also known as ocular conjunctiva. It is further of two types, limbal and square. The limbal part is the part which lies over the limbus. It is a 3 millimeter range of vulvar conjunctiva around the corner. And it is strongly adherent to the scleroconial junction. The scleral part covers the eyeball above the anterior sclera and hence it is known as scleral than the type. It is made and transparent loosely attached to its underlying sclera. The conjunctival fornix, it is also thick and transparent, continuous circular pelvis side. It is broken only on the medial side by the presence of parental and the plicus semigonaris. It joins the pulpur. Pulpur conjunctiva with the palpebral conjunctiva. As we have seen here, the phonetial conjunctiva it is circular all over and it joins the palpebral and the pulpur conjunctiva. It is broken immediately by the presence of plicus millenaris and parenchyma. It is further of four types depending on the presence of phonesis, the superior, lateral, medial, and inferior. The superior uh, phonesial conjunctiva is located at the level of superior or vital margin, extends slightly upper border of the tarsal plate to a distance about 10 millimeter from, from the upper limbs. And there are presence of glands of brows and mullous muscle in the subconjunctival tissue. The inferior fornix, it is located near the inferior orbital uh, margin, extends slightly below the lower border of the lower tarsal plate to a distance of about 8 mm from the lower limbus. It helps in maintaining the recess of the inferior fornix during the movements of the lower eyelid. The lateral fornicial conjunctiva is small in size, like the pulpy cell, extends to just behind the equator of the eyeball. And it is 40 mm from the lateral limbus and about 5 mm from the lateral canthus. The medial is, is a shallow cul-de-sac in which by the carenthal and the plica semilunar is dipped in a pool of tears, which is called as tear dip. These are the glands, the glands of brows, the glands of wolfrin. These are present in the fornicial genital. The upper lid, the glands of brows are 40, around 40 in number, and in the lower lid, they are about 8 to 10 in number. The histology of the conjunctiva the, it is divided into epithelium, adenoid layer, and fibrous layer. The adenoid layer and fibrous layer they are mainly called as substantial proper. This is the epithelial layer, the adenoid layer, and the fibrous layer. Epithelium is different in different parts of the conjunctiva. The number of cells are different. The number of layers are different. As we see in marginal conjunctiva, there are six to, ten, six to eight number of layers of the squamous epithelium, non keratinized epithelium. And also at the limbus, there are eight to ten layers of epithelium. They differ, they vary due region to region. Like in marginal, there are five layers of non keratinized 35 squamous type of epithelium. The superficial layer has squamous cells, the intermediate layer has polyhedral cells, and the deepest layer has complex cells. The tarsal conjunctiva has two layers of epithelium in the upper lid superficial layer of cylindrical cells, deeper layer of cubical cells. The lower conjunctiva, tarsal conjunctiva is made of three to four layers of cells, like the cubicle, polygonal, 
elongated bell shaped cells the fornicial and bulbar conjunctiva are three layer epithelium the limbic conjunctiva is a eight to ten layers of stratified squamous epithelium now the cells present in the epithelium they are goblet cells melanocytes lamellar cells the called and the mar the goblet cells are present between the epithelial cells in all the region of conjunctiva the melanocyte they are found at the limbus at the fornix character and at the site of the entry of anterior ciliary blood vessels the lamellar cells they are pres present in all parts of the conjunctiva the conjunctival associated lymphoid tissue is also present which consists of t and b lymphocytes and the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue like the mouth of gut and bronchi they are also found in the conjunctiva the epithelial layer it is also called the lymphoid layer it consists of fine connective tissue and the lymphocytes the most is the most developed in the fornices and at the ends of the subtarsal folds develops after 2 to 3 months of life the fibrous layer it consists of a mesh of of collagenous and elastic fibers which is thicker than the adenoid layer except in it is in the tarsal conjunctiva where it is very thin it consists of vessels and nerves of conjunctiva and uh, both the layers they are collectively called as substantial bronchi now the conjunctival glands they are glands present in the conjunctiva they are mucin secreting glands and accessory lacrimal glands the mucin secreting glands are goblet cells the glands of henle and nans the accessory lacrimal glands are the glands of browse and glands of wilson these are the glands of rows in the fornices present in the fornices they are more in upper fornix more in upper and then the lower these are the glands of wolfric present in the palpebral conjunctiva these are the glands of henle and at the limbus these are the glands of mans now the goblet cells they are round and oval in shape with an eccentric flat nucleus they are single cell mucus secreting cells They are present abundantly within the epithelium in all the regions of conjunctiva, and present in the deepest layer of conjunctiva. The density of goblet cells are more in children than the adults, and they are more in the bulbar conjunctiva and inferior fornix. The last layer. they are not true glands but the folds of mucus membrane which are present in the palpebral conjunctiva they are tubular structure with a lumen of 15 to 30 microns the glands of pans they are found in the limbic conjunctiva the glands of crows they are glands which lie in the subconjunctival tissue of the fornices and they are about 40 to 40 in the upper fornices and 60 or 10 in the lower fornices The following are also called as the glands of Sciascio, and they are present along the upper border of the superior tarsus and the lower border of the inferior tarsus. Now, a blood supply, the main supply of the conjunct arterial supply is from three sources. They are the marginal artery of the eyelid, the peripheral artery of the marginal artery of the eyelid, and the anterior ciliary artery. From this diagram, you can see this is the marginal tarsal artery. This is the peripheral tarsal artery, which lies at the borders of the tarsal plate in, in the upper and the lower lid. It gives a marginal tarsal artery. It gives a branch, ascending branch, which supplies the and descending branch which supplies the marginal and the palpebral conjunctiva. peripheral tarsal artery it gives a descending branch which supplies the this palpebral conjunctiva a, a branch from it occurs the posterior conjunctival artery it anastomoses with the anterior branch of anterior ciliary artery 
and they both supply the bulb work and gene therapy. Similarly, the venous drainage. This is the venous plexus. This is the superior peripheral venous arcade. This is the inferior peripheral venous arcade. They are present at the upper border of the upper tarsal plate and at the lower border of the tarsal plate in the lower leg. These both combine laterally to form the lateral palpebral vein. Then they form the superior palpebral vein and drain into supraorbital vein. And medially they form a medial palpebral vein and drain into superior supraorbital vein. Similarly, inferiorly, they drain into inferior of The circumcondial zone of the limbus drains into anterior cerebral. The lymphatic drainage. The lymphatic drainage from the lateral side drain into the preorbital lymph nodes, and from the medial side drain into the submandibular lymph nodes. The nerve supply is supplied by lacrimal nerve, infratrochlear nerve, supratrochlear nerve, supraorbital endofractal nerves. But the circumcordial zone is supplied from by the long serial nerves. You see a pattern here, like the circumcordial conjunctiva, this area. This is mostly supplied by anterior ciliary blood vessels and nerves. The artery supplies is the anterior ciliary artery. The venous drainage is also into the anterior ciliary veins, and the nerve supply also from the long ciliary nerves. So this is a picture. This is superior tarsal conjunctiva. This is the different nerves: supraorbital, supratrochlear nerve, infratrochlear, infraorbital nerves. See, the supraorbital nerve. This is the supraorbital nerve, which is a branch from frontal branch of the ophthalmic nerve. Supplies the superior tarsal conjunctiva, the circumcorneal zone, the five, fifth number. This is the circumcorneal zone. It is supplied by the long ciliary nerves. This is the supratrochlear nerve from the frontal branch, of, also from the frontal branch of the The infratrochlear, also from the thalamic nerve. The infraorbital. And the lacrimal nerve from the ophthalmic nerve. Now, from pathologies of conjunctiva, we are going to study a few pathologies, which includes conjunctivitis, trachoma, and pterygia, pingicula, etc. First, we see, will see the conjunctivitis, which is very common, uh, which is very common inflammation, eye, eye condition, uh, which, uh, with which the patient presents in the eye bleeding. It is also called pink time. The proper definition is that it is the inflammation of the conjunctiva, the thin, clear covering of the white of the eye and the inside of the eyelids. As we can see in this picture, we can see this is a red eye, pink eye, or red eye. This is a normal eye. The conjunctivitis can have several causes, but mostly pink eye is referred to viral conjunctivitis. It occurs that when the small blood vessels in the conjunctiva they become inflamed, they are more visible, and this is what causes the white of the eye to appear like red or pink. The types of conjunctivitis, they can be allergic, infectious, or chemical or irritant related. First, we'll see allergic conjunctivitis, which is very common in younger age groups and also in adults. It affects both the eyes and it is due to response to an allergic reaction, allergy causes 
substances, which is etc. The symptoms may include intense itching, foreign body sensation, watering of the eyes, and inflammation of the eyes, which is which can be associated with sneezing and watery nasal discharge. Treatment of allergic conjunctivitis. The treatment of allergic conjunctivitis, they are they are controlled with the allergy allergy eye drops like antihistamines. Now the infectious conjunctivitis. There are bacterial, viral, chlamydial, which is also bacterial type. The bacterial conjunctivitis is an infection which is most often caused by staphylococcal or streptococcal bacteria from our own skin or respiratory system. The respiratory bacteria, the causes include Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus species, and Chlamydia trichomatis. It is sometimes caused by sexually transmitted infections such as chlamydia. If the symptoms they do not disappear after a month, this may indicate a sexually transmitted infection. But most of the types of bacterial conjunctivitis they will resolve very quickly with the treatment. The infective conjunctivitis is extremely contagious and can easily be passed on to another person. This is also a type of bacterial conjunctivitis caused by chlamydia of Thelmia neonatra. It is defined as conjunctival inflammation occurring within the first 30 days of life. It is also called neonatal conjunctivitis and it is a serious condition which could lead to permanent eye damage if not treated immediately. It occurs when infant is exposed to chlamydia or gonorrhea while passing through the birth canal. So you can see the discharge in the eye. There are inflamed leg margins with yellowish discharge, stickiness present in the newborn. Now the viral conjunctivitis it is most commonly caused by contagious viruses associated with the common cold. To exposure to coughing or sneezing of someone with an upper respiratory tract infection. Viral conjunctivitis can also occur as virus spreads along the body's own mucous membranes, which connect the lungs, throat, nose, tear ducts, and the genome. Since the tears drain into the nasal passage, forceful nose blowing can cause the virus to move from your respiratory system to your eyes. Viruses which causes in conjunctivitis include adenovirus. The infection from adenovirus is very, uh, which is also called as hemorrhagic conjunctivitis because their very condition is very much associated with adenovirus. And there are some types of herpes virus which are also responsible for causing viral conjunctivitis. The other type of conjunctivitis is chemical or irritant conjunctivitis. It is it occurs when the eye comes into contact with the thing that can irritate the conjunctiva, like shampoo or any chemical, or chlorinated water, or balloon eyelash, which rubs rubbing the product for against the How can we differentiate between the strains which causes the irritant conjunctivitis? So the viral states, they are the most common and maybe the most ambiguous form. They tend to start in one eye where they have lots of tears and a watery discharge. And within a few days, the other eye, it also gets involved. 
due to like the viral conjunctivitis, it follows its own course of viral infection, like we have an upper respiratory tract infection. And the symptoms may include a swollen deep throat in front of the ear or under the jaw. Bacterial strains, they usually affect one eye, but can show up in both the eyes. And your eye will, um, will put out a lot of pus on the pus. The virus strains, they, may, they cause a very watery discharge, like watery discharge. And the bacteria, they cause pus, milk of the discharge. The allergic types produce watering, tearing, itching, and redness in both eyes. And you may have a itchy or a nervous associated with this. These are the symptoms that we had already discussed. They depend on the cause of inflammation. It may include the redness in the white of the eye or in an eyelid, the swollen conjunctiva, which is called hyposis, four tears, watering, a thick yellow discharge crusting over the eyelashes, especially after the sleep. It can make your eyelids stick shut when you wake up. The green or white discharge of the eye, itching of the eye, foreign body sensation, burning of the eyes, blurring of vision, which is mostly due to the discharge present in the eye, more sensitivity to the light that is called photophobia, and swollen lymph nodes. The diagnosis first we have to know the symptoms and all the symptoms and signs we can diagnose. And we may test and also test to check the strain of the bacteria which or virus causing. Visual sharpness measurement, visual equity measurement is important to determine whether vision has been affected or not. Mostly in the cases of conjunctival viral uh, conjunctivitis. There may be associated viral keratitis, which, which causes uh, superficial punctate keratitis or uh, corneal scar, corneal opacity. That is a reason, could be a reason to decrease visual activity in those cases. Evaluation of conjunctiva and external light issue using a bright light and magnification. It should be done properly and uh, an inner structure examination of eye to ensure that no other tissues are affected by the condition. The treatment includes mostly the anti allergic medication like antihistamines, and you should avoid, avoid the substance which triggered the allergy. The first step is to remove or avoid the irritant if possible. Cool and cool compresses like cold water uh, compression, they are very effective. Artificial tears, they reduce symptoms. But in severe cases, we may have to prescribe non steroidal anti inflammatory medications and anti histaminics. It can be either in oral, oral form or in eye drops. The treatment for bacteria this, we may we need to take care of the by applying eye drops and ointments in the eye for three to times a day for five to seven days. Usually, it it improves within a week. Most commonly prescribed antibiotics for infective conjunctivitis are fluoroquinolone, cetracidine, sulfonamide, chloramphenicol. They are eye drops or ointment administered straight into into the eye. Dosage depends on the time. The viral conjunctivitis. There are no drops or ointment which can treat viral conjunctivitis. Antibiotics, they are not supposed to cure a viral infection. It is just like a common cold. The virus has to run its course, which may take up to two to three weeks. The symptoms can often be relieved with cold compresses and artificial clear solutions. For the worst cases, the topical steroid drops may be prescribed to reduce the discomfort from inflammation. However, they will not shorten the infection. Now, this is the another condition which is very common in the younger age group. It 
is a bacterial infection which affects the eye caused by bacteria of the viral trichomatis. Trichoma is contagious. Spreading through the contact with the eyes and eyelids and nose or throat secretion of infected people. It can also be passed on by handling infected items. It is a le leading preventable cause of blindness worldwide. The WHO estimates that nearly 2 million people have been blinded by trachoma. Here we can see these are the limbal papillae as we are seeing here in this picture. And these are the ALS line. They are due to the scarring of the conjunctiva. Sign and symptoms, they, they affect both the eyes and may include mild itching, irritation of the eyes and eyelids, discharge from the eyes containing mucus or pus, eyelid swelling, light sensitivity, photophobia, and eye pain. This is the WHO grading system for trachoma classification. It has five grades. The short form is uh, FISTO, F-I-S-T-O, which means follicle, follicular intense scarring, trichiasis, and opacity. The first is trichomatous inflammation. This is the first sign in the presence of follicle, which is the presence of follicle. They are the small bumps formed by smaller lymph, lymph tissue on, on the back of the upper eyelid. The trichomatous inflammation intense is the next phase of swelling and inflammation, which view the normal deeper blood vessel can be seen. The scarring is the bands of scar tissue formed within the conjunctiva lining inside the upper lid, as we see in the, this picture. The trichiasis, the bands of scar, they tighten and cause the lid margin to turn inward and then the eyelashes, they rub against the eye. This is the trichiasis. The rubbing may cause abrasion of the cornea and ulcer of the cornea, which is the next uh, classification is corneal opacity. The abrasion which can lead to ulcers and ultimately opaque scarring which blocks the vision, leading to the blindness. These are the follicles, trichomatous follicles. The treatment of the latest stages of trachoma, they, they may include surgery, but initially the medical treatment is in the early stage, the oral antibiotics or eye ointment tetracycline are prescribed. Oral azithromycin, they have, it appears more effective than tetracycline. And WHO also recommend giving antibiotics to an entire community when more than 10% of children have been affected by trachoma. The goal of this guideline is to treat anyone who has been ex exposed to the trachoma and reduce the spread of trachoma. This is the elimination program that is called SAFE strategy, which is being implemented by the WHO. It consists of surgery, S for surgery to treat the blinding stage of trachomatous trichiasis, antibiotics to clear the infection, mass drug administration it is called, of oral azithromycin, which is donated by the manufacturer to uh, elimination programs. The facial cleanliness, F is for facial cleanliness and E is for environmental improvement, improving the access to water and sanitation. This is another condition which we, came, we come across very regularly in the OPD. This is pingicula. It is pyramid-like growth which appears as yellow discoloration on the conjunctiva. It can be nasal or it can be temporal. The pterygium. Pterygium is a growth of the conjunctiva mucous membrane encroaching, it uh, encroaches over the cornea. It covers the white part of the eye and encroach over the cornea. And it is a pinkish triangular tissue growth. Pterygium literally is the pterygium meaning is wing-like it, because it is a wing-like growth starting from the conjunctiva uh, over the to the cornea. Most commonly it is it starts from the nasal side of the uh, 
nasal side of the conjunctiva the main cause is due to uv radiation uv radiation of the sunlight exposure is the main uh, cause which has been considered up till now it may slowly grow but rarely grows so large that the pupil is covered and often sometimes both eyes are involved sometimes it can be bilateral rose means it can be from the nasal and both sides and the lateral side so these are the few conjunctival pathologies which we came we come across very regularly in our opd basis which we have discussed thank you